Okay, so this is just a time lapse video of a retouching that I did for some uh, photo shoot uh, that I recently photographed. I'm just gonna narrate uh, as I as I go through the video. Um, so in here, I'm just retouching the skin. I'm just doing a regular um, a healing brush, and that's pretty much the only one that I use in this video. Uh, I'm using the frequency separation. That's why it's look it looks a little bit blurred. That's because I'm working on the low frequency layer, and I already explained the frequency separation in another, in another video. Uh, all the other techniques, I'm gonna explain them eventually uh, and with detail on different videos, but for now, this is just a, uh, an overview. Um, so I'm working on the details, I'm working on the small details and little skin blemishes. I'm not fixing the skin in terms of, you know, a shadow or, or a blotchy part, patch that I will want to remove. Um, I don't use I don't use the healing brush, whether I'm using frequency separation or not, I don't use the healing brush for that, because that's gonna mess up the, the texture really, really bad. Uh, for that I use uh, dodging and burning, which you're gonna see uh, in a couple of minutes. Uh, now I'm working on the high frequency layer, and her skin was uh, was pretty nice, so I didn't have to do a lot on the high frequency layer. Uh, and I'm using a 4.5 blur uh, for those who care. Uh, okay, so now we're working on the dodging and burning. This is basically uh, making the skin even by evening out the shadow areas and the highlight areas. And I add a black and white layer just so I don't get distracted with the color. Um, that's a good technique to use uh, when doing dodging and burning because the color sometimes you don't know which one's brighter, which one's darker. So, and I actually have two black and white layers, one transforming into black and white and the other one is for contrast. So the second layer is just a regular curves layer and uh, it's on either soft light or darker mode. So if you see the black and white flickering or something like that and during this video, that's, that's what I'm doing uh, when I was doing the retouch. So I'm just going over the details of the uh, dodging and burning and brightening up the uh, darker spots uh, to make the skin look even. Uh, the first step is to make skin even and then the second one is to keep shape if you want to keep shape. Um, so that, uh, that's how it usually works. I usually uh, make the skin even with the dodging and then um, give it some shape if I want to uh, with the burning. Um, that's what, what I do for 90% of the time that I'm doing dodging and burning. Now I'm doing the same uh, dodging and burning technique with the, uh, to enhance the eyes. Uh, the, uh, I saved uh, the action for, for the dodging and burning to create the layers. And the one that I have, it's meant to protect the skin tones because it's limited with the curves. Uh, and that uh, I will not normally use that on the eyes, but uh, since she already had uh, pretty bright eyes, and I didn't care too much for it, so I'm using the same, I'm, I'm fixing both the skin and the eyes on the same layer. And it's basically just uh, darkening the dark parts and brightening it up the bright parts uh, to create some contrast. And then just adding a little bit of contour on the white of the white area of the eye. Just don't go, not going over the edges because that that uh, that will make the eye look just like a white uh, blotch, and it, it it wouldn't look it wouldn't look spherical. Um, so I'm still fixing the eyes, darkening the dark areas, making the dark areas even darker and the bright areas even brighter. That's how you can create that, that a nice contrast. Uh, and this is what I'm doing right now. I am uh, lightening up the inner part of the lower eyelid. Uh, it just gives the eye a little bit more character. And you put like, you stress it even more on the, uh, on the area that is opposite to the catch light. And here I'm, I'm fixing a little bit of the wrinkles. Uh, uh, that's what they call the pixel level dodging and burning. When you zoom in a lot and you fix uh, the wrinkles one by one. But again, since she had pretty good skin, I didn't have to worry too much about it. Uh, now I'm refining what I did with the eyes. And I'm just showing a little bit before and after. Now I'm going back to the details on the neck and stuff like that. And you'll see me on the video, like I'm going all over the place, fixing one part and then fixing another. Uh, that's usually because, you know, it, by this time of the video, I probably already spent like 40 minutes on the image and you get tired of working on just one area. So I, I don't mind like going all over the place in different areas just to them not get tired of, of the retouch. Yeah, and here uh, the model told me that uh, the lady that did her eyebrows 
I didn't do a really good job on making them even and I told her that I was gonna fix it in post so that's what I'm doing right now, right there and that wasn't my makeup artist by the way, it was somebody else and she already has a very good natural long eyelashes so I'm just darkening up uh, with the burn to what, what she already had I didn't, I didn't want to mess up a lot with them I'm just going even more on the, on the details on the skin uh, going back with the uh, on the frequency separation layers and, and that's the beauty of, of working in, in a non-linear way that you can go back to the frequency separation you can go back to the ocean burn and not mess up either one now here I'm just enha enhancing the lips, it's just the same as the skin, making it even and then you give it a little bit of shape. And you'll, you'll see me giving it shape in a little while, so uh, making it brighter and then making it darker, that will give it uh, the shape. And you have to do it really really soft with the, with the lips, otherwise it's gonna look uh, fake. And I really love what my makeup artist did in here. Uh, it looks natural, it looks very well, I didn't have to retouch at all, and you see that link below. That's where you can see your Facebook page for my makeup artist. Now here I'm, I'm going back to the forehead. Uh, you cannot really see it on the, with the video compression, but the forehead had the harshest light. So I had to go back and do an extra softening, and I did that with the, uh, again, in the frequency separation. So I'm just going back, and I'm using the regular um, healing brush tool. Now when you do that, you're using frequency separation, uh, you lose the connection between the high and the low frequency and you actually end up making the and the texture harsher. So I did, uh, I applied the dust and scratches filter, that's what I'm doing right now, and it just softens up a little bit of the of the texture without you, uh, without you losing any of the detail, any important detail. Now you can, uh, after you fix the skin, you can create some blotchiness that's either because of the uh, healing brush or because it's just more obvious now that you don't have any distractions of acne or stuff like that. So you go back uh, with the dodging and burning and fix all those little imperfections. That's uh, You do it that way, you don't do it with the healing brush because then uh, it, it's not going to look natural, it's only going to look worse. So it's about having a good uh, combination of both uh, dodging and burning and, and, and regular healing on the skin uh, to give it that uh, you know, glamorous look. Okay, so I'm, I was just uh, I flicked through the before and after just so I can see uh, the parts that I missed, part that I overdid, and stuff like that. I do that a lot. Um, so like right there, I just I just went back to the neck. Now I'm going over the uh, the liquify tool, and the secret to having a good uh, liquify result, or pretty much everywhere in Photoshop, not just liquify, is to use low settings. Uh, the only time that I use my settings at 100% is when I use the healing brush, because then it destroys the texture otherwise. But on anything else, I use low settings. So I'm using a density of 15 and the pressure of 11. You just build it up and build it up and build it up, and you will end with much more natural results. And as you get more experience, then you can use a little bit of um, um, harsher uh, settings. Uh, but from, for especially for the beginning, uh, use use the lowest settings that you can. That way, it, it will it won't be as easy to overdo. And here, I, I didn't really retouch anything on her hair. Only, I only fix what you see that I'm fixing right now uh, because it was kind of like a almost messy look I didn't want to you know, th there was no reason to to do anything else to it because it's already has that messy look to it it, it wouldn't, wouldn't look right to fix it some places and not in others okay so I'm just bringing the uh, color grading from another image that's what I do when I have different images from one set I do the color, all the color uh, in one, and then I just copy and paste the layers onto the other. And in here, you're just seeing me uh, fixing the mask, um, uh, fixing the mask because it belonged to the other image, so I deleted it and created a new one. Uh, that will only affect the background. Uh, I think that's the last before and after. 
okay and thank you for watching